Hello, uh, everybody. I am Zhou Yang Ran. Uh, following uh, Dong Ju's very really comprehensive, inspiring Chinese Wind studies on the Tibetan Plateau, I will talk a little bit about the uh, the new swan and uh, Neanderthal, uh, a, a love story between them, and how uh, how that is, uh, how that happened in the uh, changing climate context. First of all, I would like to thank all my uh, collaborators uh, who contribute greatly to these studies. As you can see, their names on the screen. So uh, Denisovan and uh, Neanderthals have contributed a, a small portion, but significant portion, to the modern-day peoples, uh, the, the DNAs. Uh, that is because, uh, as we most of us know that, because our ancestor Homo sapiens interbreeded with them in the past. A few years ago, uh, Sloan et al. Uh, they reported uh, high-quality uh, genomes from the ITK I tied the Nisova cave and they identified that the individual of these genomes uh, had a Neanderthal mother but uh, the Nisova fathers. So identifying a fourth generation hybrid is very, is very inspiring and uh, clearly demonstrates that interbreeding between these two groups uh, indeed happened. So we were also inspired by these studies and we were very curious about questions like when, well, did these two homini groups interbreed and how, uh, under what, what kind of climatic conditions. So, uh, we use, uh, uh, so as modelers, so we use, we use models, uh, habitat models. So to understand when will they potentially interbreed, we first have to understand when and where they possibly lived. So we can uh, know this information from, of course, from the fossil, uh, archaeological, and the genomic records. As you can see here, we compiled uh, the uh, published re records in the literatures and uh, show on this map. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, data for the Neanderthals, and uh, we can see here most of the Neanderthal remains were found in uh, nowadays Europe and. Uh, uh, West, West Asia and a little bit in the uh, uh, and the South area. Uh, in the contrast, we don't, we don't know much about Denisovans. We have uh, a few fossils from the Denisova cave in uh, South area, and uh, as Don Ju just showed in on the Tibetan plateaus, and uh, another fossil location in the North Laos. And so the fossil records, these fossil records are very fundamental. They provide important information regarding the past presence of these two homing groups. Uh, nevertheless, uh, so far the fossil re record is still special temporary discontinuities. So we want to know other locations at uh, other time periods if they uh, are possibly present. So to uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, we also want to know the climate conditions that uh, the uh, two hominins uh, ever experienced. So we use climate data. We use climate data, uh, data model, climate model data. So our model, uh, the model simulation was simulated uh, at our center use, uh, using CSM 1.2. So the data was. Uh, Presented, reported in details by Yun et al. in 2023. Uh, here, that uh, the entire simulation covers the last three million years, and here I will focus on the last uh, last 400 kilo years, uh, as in when that that Neanderthal and Denisovan were supposed to survive. and uh, also the the climate of the Earth experienced. Uh, as illustrated, the global mean temperature experienced a very high amplitude of climate vulnerabilities. To evaluate how realistic the climate model is, so we can compile that our model simulations to the existing proxy data from all kinds of archives, marine lake sediments, and cave species, for instance. And here we can see that uh, on the left uh, panels we compare to the um, moisture or precipitation uh, proxy data on the left side is the temperature. So uh, 
uh, overall that the model data in blue and the uh, orange orange uh, uh, proxy data they are consistent show consistency uh, quite uh, and show consistencies as you can see here and uh, if you look at the uh, Precipitation or moisture changes of the last 400 kilo years, they mostly show uh, precisional uh, volatilities that uh, occurs at around uh, 20 kilo years. And when we look at the temporal, temp temperature volatilities of the last 4,000 years, both again, both model and, model and the proxy data show larger amplitude temperature changes occurs around uh, every 100,000 years. Uh, that is can be associated with glacial interglacial cycles. So uh, after uh, this uh, uh, test with uh, with uh, the our models with the proxies, we are uh, happy and we are relatively confident about the model simulations. And now uh, we can build a, a statistical model to quantify the linkages between the climate and the fossil records. And we also take a step further, actually use the BIM data as well. So our habitat model, including uh, two uh, mod modules, the first part is uh, widely used in the literature. So here, uh, how do we do that? How do we do? How do we build the models? First of all, we use the fossil location and uh, the ages to extract the uh, four key variables from the model simulations. They include the mean annual temperatures, precipitations, uh, precipitation minimums, and net primary productivities. And we use the algorithms called Mahala Nobis distance algorithms to calculate that the, uh, uh, the that the probabilities that funding funding as a uh, many fossils at uh, uh, at uh, the uh, these four dimension climate fields. In the uh, second part of the models, we, we calculated that the probabilities to find uh, at the fossils, a specific human fossils, at a specific uh, megabond types. The megabond types are the vegetative, uh, 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 represent the different uh, plant functional types, such as like a, temp a tropical forest and uh, grassland and so on, that is uh, already presented quite well by IOK two days ago. So combining these two modules, we uh, finally can go to uh, calculate the habitat suitabilities, uh, which, uh, which uh, gives information that to find a certain home species at given climate and the bio and vegetation conditions. So since we are interested in, to, uh, interested in that when and, when and where, so we do this model simulation for both Neanderthals and the Denisovans. And since we are interested in when these two homing groups potentially interbreed, so we calculated the covariance of the two habitats to uh, consider that as a proxy for potential interbreeding. Here I show that uh, the climate uh, uh, variables that we use in the models at exactly the fossil locations and the, the corresponding ages. So we can see here that compared to the Neanderthal, that the Denisovans, the climate niches uh, is relatively uh, more, ske more skeleton and wider, even though their sampling size is uh, relatively small compared to Neanderthals. When we look at the uh, 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 biomegabond types, we found that the Denisovans uh, were quite well adapted to the uh, cold pines, including like uh, boreal, uh, boreal forest and even chinjas, uh, whereas Neanderthal, they are more adapted to the temperature forest. So these, there are clearly the differences, different uh, preferences of uh, in terms of climate and uh, vegetation types of, of these two hominid groups. So because of these differences, uh, these uh, two hominids were, uh, they were uh, separately geographically. Uh, so you can see here, this is the long term mean uh, habitat of the two group. Neanderthal habitat was simulated mostly in the western part of the Eurasia continent. Whereas the Denisovan uh, was uh, habitat was simulated more in the eastern side of the Eurasia, uh, Eurasia continent. 
and including uh, quite a bit in the, in the Tibet, on the Tibetan plateaus and parts of North China. And, and for Neanderthal, interestingly, I want to also mention that there's a little bit in the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula for Neanderthals. Uh, and in addition that these two habitats uh, was especially overlap in the central Eurasia. But this is, uh, so, so when we, because since we have the uh, fourth generation hybrid uh, uh, clearly found in the I-10, so we look at the habitat overlap at the exact location that it then is why as the fourth generation found it. We can see that over time, this is the time, over time that the habitat overlap probabilities varies considerably. And we found a relatively high chance of a habitat overlap in uh, marine isotope stage 5, which is consistent to the uh, genomic estimated by Peter's uh, 2020 papers. And so this, uh, this is, uh, we found some uh, consistent with very limited data. So our, our habitat overlap models provide a climatic context for the first generation uh, hybrids uh, in, uh, at around uh, uh, during the MS5. But the model also uh, predicted the potential, potential interbreeding periods uh, in, in the even older time periods around like 210 and 300 kilo years ago. And uh, we are hoping that the, our model prediction will be tested with uh, more additional uh, paleogenomic data available in the future. So when we look more carefully into the special temporal patterns of the two habitat overlap uh, on the lower left panels, we found an e very interesting uh, patterns, uh, kind of east-west in, in uh, seesaw patterns. So here we have uh, the uh, y-axis is the time, and the uh, x-axis uh, on top is the longitude. And we have here the color, different color shading, orange for Neanderthals, and the Neanderthals in blue, the habitats, and the black dots uh, represent the area that overlap with the size uh, scales to the probability. The larger the, the size, the uh, higher probability they are. So we can uh, see here that uh, uh, overall, the, hub, the overlap change uh, dramatically over time and space, uh, especially during like uh, uh, during marine stage 10, 8, 6, and 4, um, when we have low atmospheric CO2, the overlap was relatively restricted, restricted to the uh, to the to the west side in east uh, northeast Eurasia. In contrast, during the relative warm time periods like marine stage 9, 7, uh, 5, and so on, the overlap was uh, uh, intensified and the area was also uh, uh, split more widely and uh, into the center, into the center areas. This very, so this, the, the, this very complex special patterns in potential hub, in, in the habitat overlap and the potential interbreeding uh, give us some implications for the evolutions of the genomes of these two hominins. Uh, so specifically, if you assume that the Neanderthal and Tanisovan split from the common ancestors, assume, uh, assumably around 400 kilo years ago, the genomes will divert, uh, will divert uh, over time. Uh, However, this process is, is uh, unlikely linear. It's very complex because the extent of the interbreeding uh, varies over time and space considerably. So this is, I think, is, uh, is could be important uh, to, uh, for, for sometimes we, if people assume that the, uh, the genetic divergence over time is linear. I think it's maybe not uh, period linear from this because of the complex uh, special temporal interbreeding in the past happened. And, uh, and uh, uh, underlines is the uh, climate driven. So we want to understand uh, why we have intensifications of interbreeding in, to, in the interglacial uh, time period. So we look at uh, we look at the vegetation uh, uh, and make biotypes, 
You can see here that in the glacial uh, uh, conditions compared to the glacial compared to glacial in the interglacial period, that the uh, the temperate forest, as uh, I previously showed, that it was liked liked by the Neanderthal, they expanded from Europe into Central Asia, that which which potentially created a uh, dispersal corridors for Neanderthal into the Nisovan uh, territories. And uh, also pr provide uh, the chances for interbreeding. To further understand what are the key uh, climatic variables underlying these uh, biome changes and the habitat overlap changes, uh, we do a sensitivity simulation of the uh, of the habitat models. So we run a simulation with a uh, temporally constant temperatures. And we do EOF and PC analysis. So this is uh, this is the, the uh, EOF P PC analysis of, uh, with constant temperature. That is for, from uh, standard simulations. Well, we can see that, that EC uh, this says uh, EOF one the PC show uh, a larger uh, southwest and northeast uh, spatial patterns that was follow the glacial interglacial uh, 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 changes. Uh, when we do this again with this simulation with constant temperature, this pattern uh, mostly uh, disappeared. So this is uh, uh, illustrates that the regional temperature could show uh, could play a key role in modulating the special temporal patterns of the habitat of life. Uh, to summarize, so uh, our study with uh, slow up analysis, we found that uh, the Nisovan was more adapted to the boreal forest, while everywhere else, Neanderthal was uh, quite uh, good at uh, adapt, had adapted to the boreal forest. And second, the uh, regional temperature uh, play a key role in moderating the uh, interbreeding dynamics between the two homing groups. And uh, lastly, and I think we think that the hub, I think habitat modeling provides can provide implications uh, for the early home interspecies territory encroachments and uh, also uh, uh, potentially a complex genetic evolution history. Uh, if, so the paper was published uh, late last year. So if you were interested in that, uh, you can take a look. Thank you very much.